Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I surely appreciate your support. I always tell everybody as I build these um, videos for like-minded folks just like you and I to help everyone get to the finish line quicker but more proficiently. Today, guys, what we're going to do, come along with me, we are talking about habitat pockets and how to go about building them. We're not trying to make things worse, we're trying to make them better. And today I got a perfect situation here uh, when you hear me talk about habitat pockets. Come along with me guys and we're going to go over this one together. So what we've got guys is we've got a project here on the farm um, right off from the transition which is actually uh, I'll show you here as I you know turn you around it's actually this stretch of the transition is actually it's a bench it's an old logging road is what it is I think one of the most important keys to building uh, to you know getting a design created and getting it to work for you is promoting that line of travel now that line of travel you know early season pre-rut going into the rut late season they all have their different um you know kind of uh, amenities right or, or different power sources that we're using those for you know the way the style of hunting tied to the style of hunting that we're doing with that with that in in mind keeping that in mind I think there's, like I said, I think there's a huge gap in folks not understanding that is one of the biggest pieces of that is having that movement daisy chain together. Whether it's early season or late season, pre-rut or the rut, guys, they the, these, these bucks and these deer in general live and die by their nose, live and die by the, the navigation that the good Lord gave them um, to help, to try to help keep them alive, right? Going to and from bedding areas to feeding areas and returning in the morning from feed to bed. I think that's a huge gap that a lot of folks don't uh, don't put a lot on, enough emphasis on. So with that said today guys today we're doing is I'm building one of those habitat pockets daisy chaining the movement keeping that wind right giving them a reason to scent check certain areas while they are moving from that bedding location out to feed and you know the last places that they're gonna they're going to check on the way back from feed in the morning I always tell everybody this guys is remember the habitat pocket the reason I emphasis the habitat pocket after the doe bedding is built is for a couple reasons one first and foremost is if we're taking care of our does on the edge or not on the edge right tight to the edge within the first hundred yard rim let's say right that first hundred yards of our food sources if we're taking care of the does and we're building the best habitat we can reaching their food requirements locking those does in into the, those areas so they're very social so they'll move from food plot to food plot guys uh, but we're taking care of them first then the next step is is we're doing these habitat pockets just for that reason what it is guys is these habitat pockets are to collect overflow does that just don't want to be in them doe bedding areas the antisocial does right or i always say is the immature bucks so in other words we're we're jumping we're uh, you know kind of doing everything we can to get those does uh, give those does an area to bed if they don't want to be there we give them another option to bed on the transition we're giving these hab those does another ha habitat pocket maybe to check them up there so it's overflow does and it's also uh, immature bucks because they will bed closer to more drama more foot traffic past those areas once we collect that all that movement or all them deer in those locations what that does is it opens up the core it gives the potential for your property to have a core value whether that's internal or external in ridge country depending on how that goes it gives the opportunity for you to have one of those bucks slot in or multiple bucks slot in and call them areas home because before you started those areas were probably where the does were saturating uh were saturating and taking that over so that the power of having that habitat correct and locking those does in they were moving saturating all the way through your farm to get to that area and you know there was nothing left for the bucks so the bucks are all on your neighbors so if we are not housing any bucks on the property 
in the core, is that a bad thing? And the, and the answer to that is absolutely not. The, the reason for that is, is we're giving all the does that were on the neighbors that were saturating all the way through our property onto the neighbor's property because they have the nearest correct habitat. What we're doing is we're bringing those does to the plate, to our plate, to their doe bedding areas, to our habitat pockets. Now, yes, it's on the neighbors. Maybe it's on your fence lines. Maybe it's on the neighbors. Maybe these open areas that the drama is now gone from may still be habitat correct. Those bucks are going to slot in. So is it, a, is it the goal to have them on our property? Absolutely. Is it a bad thing if we just bring them closer to the neighbors? Uh, you know, if they're betting on the neighbors, that's not a bad thing at all because they are going to relate to our property more often during daylight hours. The property here in Kentucky is a is a perfect example of, of just that. We were able to do that over the last two years here and it's only getting better. So the habitat pocket guys that we're going to build today is just for that. We've got our doe bedding underway in multiple locations. Now we're building our habitat pockets along that line of travel, along that transition. Here's the here's an, the other reason. As a deer cruises, as a buck cruises, especially in the pre-rut and the rut, but as even in the preseason when he's going from bed to food, they don't know what's in these areas. They just know they have to scent check them. Pre-rut comes along, the wind is in his in his favor. You're setting these up so the wind is in his favor and in your favor. So when you're in that stand that's around the corner here, 75 yards from this pocket, guys, there's a reason for him to be sliding past here because the wind is coming out of this habitat pocket across the transition. It's at the side of his face, and it's doing the same at the at the stand location that's just 75 yards from here. You're in the stand, the wind's in your face, and in order for him to ch scent check that licking branch that he's coming up into, he's or going coming to to get that information. He has to have the wind in his favor too. So it all connects and it's very important. What we're gonna do today, guys, is you can see, this is one of those ones that has just a little bit of, of you know understory. It's shaded out by some cedars to the south. So we're gonna cure that. We're gonna poke a hole or two in these cedars. But you can see it's uh, you know the 11 o'clock time right now. There's just no sunlight in here and there's no leaves on right now, right? We're in January, uh, mid to end, end of January, and, uh, and we don't have uh, any sunlight in here so what that tells me is when when there's leaves on the tree it's only going to be worse so what we need to do is we need to cure this problem as quick as we can so when the leaf out starts to grow it doesn't just continue to shade this out and nothing now here's the deal on this one guys just a little plateau it's it's not real uh, completely level but it's it's level it's if you look around it's the most level spot uh within you know 50 60 yards and what's good about it is it falls right on the transition. These are built in kind of a um, you know half uh, circle shape, if you will. I say I always say 30 to 50 feet in diameter, but they're built right on the transition. So if a buck was sliding up through here with that scent checking this spot, guys, and as I'm looking up through here right now, I see a bunch of scrapes, not a bunch, but two within probably a hundred yard stretch here that I can see, and you know we have to cut those off. So it tells me that they're already using this bench to cruise. We're going to build this here, but what I'm doing, guys, I'm going to go in, and anything that's over silver dollar size, especially the invasive stuff, I'm just going to cut it all out first. Flat, you know, flush cut that in there. It will regenerate. So as you cut that stuff off, the energy goes back in the ground. You're going to, you're going to promote more uh, uh, shoot jumps, or, or what I call stump jumps, right? But it's in the uh, root stock. You're going to promote more energy in the ground. And all of these little shoots that we're cutting off that are two inches now, that all the food is eight feet in the air, that's all going to regenerate on the ground, giving them a reason or a better way to feed their grazers, right? They want to feed with their head down. Go in there, but what I was saying, guys, is we're going to build kind of rabbit habitat, right? You put that down in here. No need to bring, um, you know, no need to bring pallets and stuff like that in here. What you do, guys, is you take that smaller debris stuff first, line you lay down like that second line you lay down like this and you just keep rotating that back and forth what it does is it gives you know builds pockets underneath it maybe you stretch them out you know six eight inches what that does is if if you know birds or or rabbits or they are protected from birds of prey from above you know so if you're in an area with pheas pheasants maybe quail all that comes into it so we can use this stuff guys we're not just going to cut it down and just leave it lay right on the ground to rot we're going to take it take it and maybe a 30 to 50 feet diameter habitat pocket here will have 
maybe five, six of those rabbit huts, something like that. The rest of it, we're gonna go around the outside first. We're gonna hinge cut to the outside so we don't block it off here. There's gonna be no trees parallel to the transition. We're gonna go around the outside, tip it all the outside first. Then we're gonna lay two or three trees into the center. So this is what it looks like before, guys. Buck cruising up, wind at the side of his face. The wind is good for us, wind is good for him. This is what it looks like before. And I'm gonna show you here with about, we're gonna time it, but I would think, give me about 25 minutes and I'm gonna show you now what it's gonna look like then versus what it looks like now and how much more inviting and habitat correct it really is. So here we are guys, 25 minutes. You can see what we've got behind us now. I will take you in here on a tour now guys. We want a diverse, you want some hinges on the ground, just because of the way that it is, you're gonna have some, some canopy. I didn't intentionally make the canopy, that's just how the couple of them fell. So you got canopy, and you've got the, the hinges that are touching, the tops are touching the ground. Um, you know, it's a perfect world saying that we don't want any canopy, but it never happens that way, and you can spend hours and hours and hours trying to fight that right, guys. So it's more of a, you know, a diverse, habitat pocket is what we're creating right so i'm gonna flip you around here i'm gonna um other than the pop popular here that we're gonna get uh, gone so anything silver dollar size i can take that one too um that was out of their head reach you know made the brush pile there doesn't look like much but from above but when you get down low like that i mean that's protecting a lot of rabbits and some birds in there so like I said, some canopy, one or two on top of each other, not all canopy and not all, you know, hinge. This one here is actually, you can see that one is hinged down and it's just resting on the top, but the top of it's all reachable. The whole, the top of the whole log is reachable as that regens. So we're getting some, like I said, you know, we're getting some sunlight through, but that sunlight is through those cedars. We don't want this to die so when i come in to do some hack and squirting i'm going to pop about a couple or maybe two of these cedars out just leave them stand but kill cut them so they're there so we get some more perforation of sun down into this pocket just the 20 minutes that i've been here it's getting more sun than it was before but uh beach flared that to the outside left the you know this is all briars so we've got some green briar and blackberry and stuff growing right there um, there's a little, actually a little knob right there that they could go up further on if they wanted to. The only thing this doesn't have internal of it is low, you know, low um, thermal cover. Has the cedars behind. It's got a little cedar right there to the, actually to the north, which is perfect. So I could add kind of a tip here, guys, is if you're going to plant cedars or spruce in your bedding area for thermal, don't plant them right out here in the open because the deer will eat them. Go in here. You can see I just kicked this out just for a reference, guys. I don't spend a lot of time making those, but if I have some time and shooting a video or something, you know, I'll I'll go in and clean a little spot off so some grass, no different than us, right? Uh, just a comfy, comfy little clean spot. You don't have any sticks jabbing into your thorns. Um, little spot right over there on that knob I can see that's going to turn into a bed. Uh, the only thing with those cedars or the spruce, like I was saying, is guys, instead of planting them out here, I would go right in there underneath all of this you know there's plenty of stuff where it can go, grow up through the top but i would go down below and you know i would i would uh i would plant one of them in there kind of hide them so the deer don't get right up to them it's not just we're walking by and we're gonna eat the top of this off so just kind of they're not you know the habitat pockets don't have to be big 30 to 50 feet in diameter as you cruise by here like i said the deer the bucks when they're cruising they don't know what's in there they just know they have to check it. They're cruising up through here. You can see the old logging road behind me. Over time, we're gonna let this grow back in. This has been, you know, kind of, I think they'd probably mowed it over the years. That's to the uh, kind of northwest. And this one runs back to the east here. So letting this all grow in so it's all draped up. And we're just gonna, you know, take this now instead of it being straight, we can see 50, 60 yards in the future, it'll be just like this snake trail up through here that i'll mulch out so that you know cutting that visual line uh down to you know 30 40 yards instead of 100 yards let's say so that's the that's the pocket look guys you know i, I think a lot of folks 
psych themselves out to think that this is so unreachable. I can't do this. And that's, it couldn't be further from the truth. You guys can do this. This is, um, I'm here to help when I design and I am getting back, back into some of the building and stuff because like I said, you know, need some time here to on my own property to build, but I love helping people. I love helping, you know, folks get this accomplished on your farm. So, but 20 minutes, total game changer. A reason, giving him a reason to scent check this, this line of travel, promoting it daisy chain and that movement together whether it's habitat pockets mineral sites water holes licking branches whatever that case is food plots we're promoting that line of travel don't waste your time this 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 year this upcoming season don't waste your time in a tree stand if there's not a reason for him to be there while you're there be somewhere where the odds are stacked in your favor